What is up, people of YouTube? It's Mike here. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening for whenever you're watching this. If you're watching this live, appreciate you hanging out here on a Friday morning. I'm live from Arizona here. Just got back from uh, hitting some garage sales, hit a thrift store, and uh, didn't get much. It's about $30. It's kind of depressing. <laughs> kind of depressing, but uh, thank God for the internet, man. You know, doing some online arbitrage, some sniping, some good old stuff like that for sure. Uh, yeah, just been uh, keep myself busy, guys. Keep myself busy. That's what it's all about. Keep yourself busy, getting stuff listed, getting stuff sold, packaging stuff up, getting stuff to Amazon. Working the local game today. I had a I sold a TV entertainment stand to a guy on uh, OfferUp, which was pretty cool. Paid five bucks for it. Got forty bucks cash. I'm like, boom, bingo. Worked myself a five dollar Starbucks. Then <laughs> craziness. God, you get, you get I get sucked into Starbucks. Totally sucked into it. But it's good. Yeah, other than that, just, uh, you know, keeping myself busy, just freaking. I'm telling you what, I, I don't know if it's you guys are the same way, but my mind never stops racing. I mean, I don't know how to explain it. It's just nonstop and uh, it's starting to take a toll on me. I mean, I'm not sleeping that much, you know, a couple hours here and there. And I'm just freaking, I got so much in my mind, so much stuff to do, right? It's like, geez. And I'm like, man, I'm going to be 40 next year. <laughs> I'll be 40. That's insane. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just working at the goals, you know, keep working at your business, getting stuff moving, getting stuff freaking going, make as much money as possible. And, you know, obviously, you know, taking some time to smell the roses, right? Smell the roses, take some of that, like that cashola and, um, you know, go do something fun with it or save money to, to buy a house or, or whatever. But, um, yeah, well, I appreciate you guys, uh, hanging in tune here. So let's kind of get into this here. You know, the, what was, the, what did I even call this show today? Um, Taking steps to scale your business. All right, let's get into that. And I got some other stuff that I want to talk about. But the um, the big thing is, is okay, I get asked this a lot, Mike. How can I take my business to the next level? And I'm just going to kind of give you this scenario here. All right, let's let's talk about somebody who's because I can break it down a thousand different ways. All right, and there's different scenarios for different people. Honestly, I mean, whether somebody's part time or full time. But I want to I want to kind of cover this as kind of like a blanket statement, and you can apply it to whether you're part time, full time, doing this five hours, or if you're hardcore, right? Now I'm a big believer in this. Okay, you know when you're do, when you're reselling and you're doing this for a living, you know it's important to you know to really understand that you know you're not getting a paycheck, right? You're not getting a paycheck. You you have no health care insurance, right? All these 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 things that if you had a job, you know you'd have some of these benefits right for sure so you have to keep this in mind that you know there's gonna be weeks that are gonna be slow sales there's gonna be weeks that are gonna be just rock and rolling and it's hard to determine you know when that happens and all you can kind of do is just you know just keep listing right that's really my you know when people say oh you know sales are slow I just say keep listing that's all you can really do right but if you apply yourself and get yourself where you're selling an Etsy eBay Amazon maybe you build your own e-commerce site or doing local, right? If you have these other platforms, you can you're going to be able to get more from all those little areas, right? And that makes a huge difference, you know. Um, especially the local game. I mean, the local game, you start flipping stuff, you start finding out what people need, what people want. Maybe you take less margins on on that stuff. You can move it pretty quickly, and it's and it's fast ca fast cash that same day, right? You know, put up a listing and offer up or Craigslist or local Facebook, and boom. So, how do you scale up? All right. Now, obviously. You know, if, if you if this is your first time listening to me, or if you've been listening to me for a while, you know, back when I lived in Illinois, I had a warehouse, and at the at the peak time, we had, I mean, I think it was eleven or twelve employees. So, when I first got my first employee, and this is the only way I can really describe it, was, you know, there was I had set bills in my warehouse, right, and we had to have move volumes and stuff, and we had to get sales in every day to to keep it afloat. And I was a big believer when I got my first employee. I'm like, oh man, this is gonna be a game changer. This is gonna be huge. I am so excited. And then what I realized was once I implemented an employee into you know my business, having them do odds and ends, the stuff that I was doing, listing the stuff, prepping the stuff, there wasn't an immediate impact. Okay, yes, more stuff was happening, getting done, right?
but there wasn't an immediate impact for a good month until I saw it. And I'm like, okay, there's there's some money coming in here. Now I see it. Now I see this growth. All right. So if you're a one man person, one man show right now, you got to understand. You know, you got to you got to basically get a piece of paper, write down exactly what you're doing on a schedule every week. Do this for 30 days straight. Write down exactly like your time frames. Right. Hey, from eight to twelve. You know, I went out thrifting. Went out sourcing. All right. You have to find out where your time's at and how you can manage your time. And, and figure out, you know, what, where are you spending most of your time at? Okay, once you've done that after 30 days, you got to basically say to yourself, okay, what, where can I find ways to improve that or eliminate some of this time? And it's hard for me to tell you, like, well, I don't know your numbers are, right? So I don't know if you're making 1,000 or, five, you know, 500,000. But either way, you know, um, when you're a one-man show, you can only get, do so much. So it's so important to really look at your time frame and look at the piece of paper and say, okay, this is what I'm doing wrong or... Yeah, I just listed these 40 stuffed animals on, on eBay, and then after that month, you know, they haven't sold. So, okay, you can kind of consider that kind of waste of time. You know, you already did the work, obviously, but you put it out there and said, okay, here's here's where it's at, but it didn't sell right away. So you gotta you gotta find out where your fast flips are at and where your long tail items are at. You gotta calculate all this. And I would recommend anybody, if you're starting off, okay, <clears throat> everybody when they're starting off is on different budgets. You know, um, they have different cash flow situations, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to ignore the fact that there's people out there that, oh, yeah, I got a 100 grand in my bank and I'm going to start tomorrow and I want to hire 25 people. Fine. <clears throat> Those people, I mean, they're not irrelevant. They're just not the norm. So I'm trying to reach out to you that's out there that is, is, is the one man show. And how do we get how do we get more more productivity, more sales in? And this is the best way to do it is write down all the stuff that's going on. Write down exactly what you listed. How long it took you to do this, and write this down for thirty days. That way, you got a game plan there. And after that first thirty days, reassess it. Say, does that does that make any sense? You know, oh yeah, that was a waste of time there. Yeah, I went out fourteen hours last week, and I only found five hundred of the stuff at the thrift store. You know, the thrift store game could be a, a a waste sometimes, guys. Honestly, or you go to these weigh and pays and garage sales, it could be time suck. You know, you got to calculate all of your time. Because if you're out there going to the thrift stores and you're like, yeah, their prices are getting higher, they know what's going on, especially, you know, Goodwill, they are selling now on Amazon FBA, you know, all these things, you got to calculate that. That's how you're going to be able to figure out where you need to improve or where you need to change, okay? Once you do that, then you say to yourself, okay, let me get my system going. Let me figure out what is selling for me, what is not selling for me, where do I want to be, okay? And then here's the most important thing is once you find out what you need, and how you're making this money, you're going to have maybe Amazon's the way to go with these books. I'm doing, I'm, I'm rocking and rolling with the books. Then you need to make sure that works, that system. Test it for 90 days, 180 days. Now, you guys all know reselling, things change all the time. Different products sell different price points. So there's all these other things to implement into this. But at the same point in time, right, you've got to understand, you've got to get a rhythm going. You've got to get certain funds coming through every time before you start looking to get an employee. Right, if you got a hundred hours in your wallet, and you're like, yeah, I mean, I need to get an employee because I'm just lazy. I don't want to list things. That's that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's ridiculous. I mean, just get the work done. Right, you got to push yourself to the limit here. I mean, this is. I always say, you know, anybody can do this, and I really believe anybody out there can go out there and 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 knock it out of the ballpark. Okay, but it's work. At the end of the day, it's 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 work. It's time consuming, and it's not for everybody. You know, um, there's a lot of people that come on and they yap and they shoot, shoot the stuff here or the, there's programs here. And it's like, it's, I look at some of it, I'm like, it's, they're, they're giving off the wrong message of, oh, this is just a quick uh, get rich quick scheme. And that, you know, that's just not the case. You know, it's not the case. You have to actually work. <laughs> you know, whether you're doing this part time and you're spending six hours a, a, a night doing it, you're putting in time. But if you can eliminate your time and figure out where you're wasting time, or it's unproductive time, or it's just not feasible listing $6 items with no results. They're not selling for six months. That's called a waste of time, right? Now, if you're selling those $6 items and you're doing it in bulk and, you know, over the period of time, you know, they're selling, okay. But you need to have some other mix of stuff in there, right? I'm a big believer in mixture of stuff. <laughs> you got to have a mixture of stuff. A lot of things going on and understand that you could pull, money starts coming in from all these different areas. And once you figure that out, and you say, okay, this works over here on Etsy, or Amazon works over here, right? A lot of things can be done. But once you get to that point where you're going, okay, you know what? I gotta get this, I gotta get an employee. 
let's say you got you got 10, 15, 20, 30 K sitting there now, right? You've you've already built your system and now you're trying to move up. You're trying to move up the ladder, right? Not down. You're saying, okay, I gotta find somebody. Because really, truly, once you get somebody in, whether it's from you know coming in your house working or you have a storage unit or whatever it may be, you give them the ordained tasks of listing, photographing, do all that. Then you take yourself and put yourself in another productive area, right? Don't just sit around, you know, yeah, smoking cigars today, boys. You're the, yeah, just pull out the whip, right? No, you can't do that. You have to work too, right? I mean, you can do whatever you want to do. I'm just giving you some tips that might help you if you're trying to get to the next level, right? Because a lot of people say, oh, yeah, just buy this course and it's going to the next level. Courses, sure, uh, books, whatever, all this stuff. You know, for what I what I see that benefit in those is that it can speed up your learning curve big time if you're new, right? If, if even if you're an established reseller, and a, this course might sound interesting, right? Sure, right? This country, everything is in this world is built on education, is it not? So it's no different than going to a college to learn about the medical field than going to pick for profit or these other places and get some kind of education, right? I think it's pretty pretty sound there. You're getting an education. You're getting a knowledge base, right? I mean, if you want to be a heating and AC guy, do you think you can just uh, maybe maybe you can just go on YouTube? Oh, yeah, here's that guy, Joe J Johnny's Heat and AC Company, teaches me how to become uh, certified in 30 days. I don't know, but I, I think you have to have a course. You have to be certified. You have to, you know, get on the right track and understand how things sell. Now, of course, there's a ton of free information that's out there, but just take everything to what I'm saying. But back to this whole scaling thing, you know, you've got to be able to put yourself in a situation where you have funds, you have money, and you're and you're and you're building your business. You know, I'm not talking about oh, yeah, I got an extra two hours this week. That's nothing, guys. I mean, come on, <clears throat> realistically. <clears throat> so you got to put yourself where you're actually making money. You're seeing it compound week after week or month by month, where then you can jump the next level. Now you might say, well, what is that next level, Mike? Well, you know, there's a lot of talk about private label. There's talk about wholesale. And I'm not saying these are bad ideas or bad opportunities as a reseller. What I'm going to do is tell you guys these, this real quick, about private label and wholesale. It's capital. You need capital to start these. And a lot of these are low, low, low ROIs. And they're competitive. All right? Just because you watch some video of, man, all you got to do is go to Alibaba, <coughs> import this stuff from China, and I'm in. And I could be like you over there with the Ferrari? No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it does not work that way. All right. You know, you, you can fail 100 times before you, you get one success when it comes to private labeling. Same with wholesaling. If you're wholesaling products, even from this country, um, I deal with wholesalers, distributors, and I sell their products. Do they sell? Does it work? Yeah, it, it does work for me. The margins are very slim. You're always going to have better margins when you're out and about and you're either sourcing products at the thrift stores, clearance, estate sales, if you're finding something where it's mispriced on the line or wherever it may be or something, you know what I mean? That's where you're going to get the huge ROIs. You're not going to get huge ROIs from being a wholesaler of uh, Billy Bob's AC units you're selling on Amazon, guys. Come on, right? I mean, huge numbers. Yeah, I just sit at home and all you do is just, you know, Sell this stuff on Amazon, and drop ships, all this craziness. If you believe that you're going to make millions doing the wholesale and the private label, best of luck. But I'll tell you what, be cautious. Be very cautious because if you have the money right now and you're looking at getting into private labeling, you got to test the market. you got to see, okay, what are the opportunities here? Right? You really have to do your homework, and then you're taking risks. It's no different, honestly, than going to the casino with a private label product. Okay? Going there and yep, I got three thousand. I'm gonna put on this new private label product and I'm gonna put it on black seventeen. That's what you're doing, and you're risking it. Boom! Up, oh, it was red. Uh, red three. Damn. Oh, right, actually, it's red four. <laughs> it's red four. That's what happened. And there it is. You can get this nice product. You're gonna have to go through this whole process importing this stuff if that's the way you're doing it. Now, for me, I do private label. Just like I said, I do wholesale. You know, I do private label barbecue sauces. I got barbecue spice rubs that I mess around with. And am I getting rich selling those? No. Am I making a profit? Sure, I'm making a profit. Is the profit huge, Mike? No. I mean, my gosh, I'm paying three and I'm selling for 12. 
you know, I have bigger profit ROI and finding some books that I got at Goodwill or a t-shirt that I found or a sweatshirt or a, a, a blazer jacket. You know, but the idea is when you're building this private label or wholesale is to sell an abundance of them. You know, same thing here with reselling. Good, doing it the, what I like to call the old-fashioned way or whatever you want to call it, picking, um, flipping, whatever it is. You're out there, you're going for it, and you're running around, and you're finding these items going, yeah, ooh, I scan that. It, it goes for, I pay two, it goes for 60, right? You got to build a system. And if you're new right now and you're listening to me, Understand right now the opportunity is for you to get a bankroll, right? Whether you do eBay or Amazon, build that bankroll, excuse me, build that bankroll and then have funds, right? Make your 20000 make your 40000 get to $100,000. Is it difficult to get to make $100,000 full-time as a reseller? D it depends. It depends. You got to go through a lot of uh, trial and error your first year. Got to see what's going on, right? But uh, realistically, can you? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Easily. Easily, no doubt about it. The tools are here, guys. eBay, Amazon, these third-party platforms, Etsy, all right? The opportunity is now to get into this and work, right? But if you're going to start looking at these other things and say, well, okay, I got $300 in my bank account. I want to scale up. I'm going to go for private label. I'm going to go to Alibaba. Again, write down all these hours, these times of the day, you are wasting time, Okay. Wasting time or oh, yeah, I watched this four-hour video by these these clowns telling me about private label It's called wasted time if you're sitting there If you're just sitting there and you're just sitting on the couch and oh, yeah, let me let's check out the seminar Make sure you're working doing something else right or if you even in these you're in these paid courses <clears throat> watch those replays <clears throat> Well a lot of these courses. I mean there there's ready vi videos established you right, but I'm telling you something don't look at these other opportunities unless you've Conquered these other ones you've got going on to where you've got some money now if you come from if you have a full-time job And you've got money saved up and you've been doing this for a long time and you've got money You're going okay. I'm really looking to get into it. Sure, but again, there's risk Nobody on here ever wants to talk about freaking risk, right? Everyone wants to say like like a uh, northern picker says it's all freaking uh, rainbows and puppies <laughs> There's risk in everything people all right, but the risks become higher once you start dabbling into the the wholesale, all right, you know, with the wholesale, some of these companies, you know, five thousand dollar order minimum, thousand dollar minimum, okay. And then you get that in, you order it all up, right? You spend your two G's on this product, you get it in, and you're like, oh, this is gonna be a home run, and if and it bottoms out, then what? It could put you out of business. I'm telling you, I, I talk to a lot of people. I see a lot of people come and go through this door, and my always my biggest thing is take advantage of the scenarios now, build up your cash flow. Right? I mean, what's, what's so crazy about that? <laughs> you know, just create your cash flow. And if that means at the thrift store or that means you're sniping eBay or going to book sales or estate sales, doesn't matter where you create it, create it. Then once you have some money sitting in your bank, then you start looking at scaling by maybe looking at an employee, maybe looking at developing an e-commerce site, right? Maybe um, scaling up and saying, okay, you know, we usually do three to 400 listings a month on eBay. Now with this employee, we're going to try to get up to about 800, right? That's scaling, guys, right? But make sure you can pay that employee. <clears throat> make sure after 30 days with your employee that if nothing gains, if there's no more capital being raised now that you get an employee, what are you going to do? Because that's the reality. You can listen to another 500 more things this month with an employee that you're paying, I don't know, 10 bucks an hour a week. Let's say you're, they're, they're working part-time for you, so that's 200, that's 800 a month. And you might not see any increase in your sales. You'll see more inventory up there for sure. <laughs> but at the end of the day, that's how you scale. You know, I mean, look at look at like uh, McDonald's. Do you think McDonald's has said, "Oh yeah, here um, our first uh, stores here, people are loving this. I'm loving it, <laughs> right?" That they just said, "Hey, um, it's been a week here since we've opened. Let's go. Let's go open up another shop over here, right? Let's go open up another freaking McDonald's." No. They had to get cash flow. That's how you got to treat this like a business, people. Treat it like a business. Well, how do you think businesses expand when they have more money? All right. <laughs> I'm trying to really instill this in your head because there's a lot of just craziness that's out there. Now, I'm not just talking about on YouTube, I'm talking everywhere. Craziness. Fast cash. Give me your money. This is that. Let me tell you how this works. 
this was, you could sell this right now for 150 bucks. Here's a bolo. Here's your mama. Here's Joe Blow. Whatever. <laughs> At the end of the day, it all comes down to scaling is about your cash flow. Build your bankroll, man. Right? Build the bankroll. You want to start importing direct from China? Right? You found the next million dollar idea? Do you, I mean, and you want to order a 40 foot container because that's the minimum of what somebody, the supplier in Shanghai wants? Well, how much do you think that's going to cost? Here's the product cost here. Okay. 26000 All right. Now you got your import fees. You got your ocean container fees. You know, you got all these other fees involved, right? You got to start small and build it up. Go create your business name. Go to the bank. How many of you, you know, have a bank account with your business name on it? I guarantee you 90% of you people that follow me probably don't even have that. Okay. Don't start thinking of freaking private label or yeah, because uh, you hear these guys. I'm thinking about doing private label, man. I heard so and so does it, man. That's what I think. That's what I'm gonna do. I, you know, uh, blah 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 blah, right? <laughs> blah blah blah, blah 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 blah. So you have to go and build a bankroll. Just because you sold freaking thirty, you know, Super Nintendos, you're not balling, yo. <laughs> you got to ball every day. You got to keep building it. Trust me. You got to sit there and build a bankroll. Once you get that bankroll, then you start going, okay, this is what I'm going to develop, or this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to expand. I hear this all the time. How many times have you heard, heard this? Oh, yeah, I'm getting here. I'm going to get to my warehouse. I'm going to get, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna get my warehouse. going to get my warehouse. Why? If you're making $80,000, you're going to get a warehouse? That's a joke, people. Come on. You're, you're going to go out and spend all this money on a warehouse to just come back and get $80,000? You can make $80,000 plus out of your basement out of your house. Shit, even if you live in a freaking trailer down by the river. <laughs> you know? You got to tighten up the rope here and you got to get it out there and you got to put it in paper. You got to create a plan. You got to create a business plan and see if it works. Don't say, oh, you know, Mike, I listen to you and you sell clothing and I went and bought this clothing and I'm selling it too. Great. Yeah? You go 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 6 months. How much money do you have left over after paying all your bills? You're barely just getting by? Do you have an extra $1,000 you can mess with? Okay, great. That doesn't mean you go and say, let me go get an employee. Now, obviously, you can roll the dice. <coughs> I mean, you can roll the dice. You got a little bit of money. You want to get a helper. Get it? Sure, go ahead. Everybody's got to take chances to take risks somewhere. But understand, you know, um, tell that person up front. Say, listen, man, we're going to test this. And um, if it doesn't work out next week, that the stuff doesn't sell, I can't pay you. Because a lot of you guys, I think, and I'm not trying to sound arrogant or like, hey, I know my shit, or I'm the best, or I'm just this, this, that. I'm just telling you from my experience, whether you take it from you know from me or not. You know, you have to go out there and freaking move. You got to hustle and you got to build a bankroll. If you're sitting there, I heard something the other day. Oh my god, yeah, we do a hundred thousand dollars a month in sales and blah 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 blah. And you know, yeah, I got you know uh, one hundred forty thousand dollars in debt, and it's like, what? But this is whoop, rewind that. See, they don't, they don't even realize what they're saying anymore. When I hear somebody say, oh, I've got all this debt, first off, I say, why aren't you paying the debt off? I mean, what, what are you doing, right? You're going to owe that eventually, buddy? What do you think? Or are you just going to be one of those people and say, ah, forget about it. Oh, this is freaking, uh, yeah, I'm just going to file the old chapter 13, so the seven. <laughs> right? If you have debt right now, so I'm saying, don't even look at it, it's scaling up if you have debt. Get yourself in a scenario where things are under control, Right? Where if you are using credit for your business, use it wisely, Daniel Son, right? <laughs> use it wisely, Jedi. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, the way I think I have really made it through all these years is, is one, hard work, right? Eliminating debt, right? Having capital by saving money, creating uh, plans, creating um, different e-commerce sites, going and selling on different platforms, all of these things. And they just didn't happen overnight. You know, when you hear somebody, and I'm telling you guys this, this is, I just want to point this in, in the right direction. If somebody has been reselling for two years and they've done eBay, Amazon, Etsy, Bonanza, um, Craigslist, OfferUp, uh, my own e-commerce platform, private label, uh, wholesale, flipping homes, selling cars, selling motorbikes, right, uh, delivering pizzas, owning a restaurant. When you hear somebody say all that in that short period of time, you have to say this one word yourself, bullshit. No, what? Come on, think about that, guys. Right? I understand. You know, a lot of you guys come on YouTube and you're here to try to get some information. This is that. But you know what? All that stuff that I said I've done, 
it's taken me all these years. You just can't do all this stuff in this short period of time. Because if you did, then you're the greatest ever, and you succeeded. My God, you're you're you're, you're the greatest. But come on. Yeah, I, we no longer sell on eBay anymore. Forget them. Yeah. Why? You probably never even succeeded with eBay. You can crush with eBay. <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, it, it's it's like Brandon says here. FBA, it's all you, all you, all you really have, and all you need. You don't, you know, you don't need the space. You, if you're gonna just do Amazon, you could just buy the stuff, get it out of your house, and and what do you need a warehouse for? You can live pretty comfortably just doing Amazon FBA if you're finding the right stuff and you're, you're flipping stuff quick, right? And you have no inventory at your house. You never have to ship anything. You've freed up your time. See? So this goes back to what I was saying earlier. Get that piece of paper. Write down all these things that you do all damn day, all week, every month, and eliminate it. Eliminate the waste of time. All right? Wasted money. Oh, yeah, I keep picking up all these, these, these shoes that I'm finding at the thrift store, man. I'm rocking and rolling all these Johnson & Murphy's. Paying twelve dollars a pop for them, and you've bought three hundred, but you've only sold four this month. Is that actually a winning system? Is that a smart business move? No, it's not. Unless you want to be a hoarder, or you're waiting and saying, "Yeah, you know, I just can't pass up on these Johnson and Murphys." You know, you need little things to move a little quicker. <laughs> and um, you know, with Amazon, there's two different approaches. You know, obviously, we all want the fast flips, but the long tail or the stuff that's ranked. 400,000 in health and beauty that was selling 45 days, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's what I'm saying. You know, it, it's just you've got to really build and you got to plant these seeds, and it takes time. Like, anything, you plant a seed, it takes time for it to grow, to nourish. You, so let's, let's take, for example, you're going to be planting an orange tree. How long does you think it takes for an orange tree to, to all of a sudden to produce an oranges? Next week? Next month? the same thing with reselling guys it takes time it takes years <laughs> right um, same with like lemon trees it be got to take that same philosophy in your business and like going back to when I said a couple episodes back you know go at your pace forget what everybody else is doing and people are flipping homes over here people are, are running over grandma over here who cares do what you need to do and make sure you're not wasting time you're putting money aside you're scaling your business you know in terms of the best way you can and when I say scale I mean, you're, you'd go through it all first, first hand to see if it's successful. Well, so you've realized that and you've got capital, you're making money, your bills are paid. Now you're scaling. Now you understand, okay, now I see where I can improve on this. Or I now I see, you know, I could do some bigger buys or I can, you know, go into some auctions and, and pick up some of these unique collectibles or whatever it may be. <laughs> ah. But that's my little rant on that, guys. You know, just the whole scaling point, guys, is it's just it's it's a mentality thing. A lot of people, oh yeah, I'm gonna teach you how to scale up in a week. Come on. You gotta go and learn the basics and you've gotta go and fight the trenches, right? I don't care if you tell me you run a six minute mile, right? <laughs> but if you're not running around and conditioning yourself and you're just being lazy and a year goes by or two years go by, you ain't run that six mi minute mile anymore, people. You're not you're not the 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 king at the freaking racetrack. You know, you're you're slacking off. It happens with everybody. I, shit, I slack off from time to time, but I need to. <laughs> but, you know, but I'm just telling you that's what has helped me to scale where my business is at right now. And I do $29.7 million. I mean, let's just let's just cut to the chase here, people. $29.7 million. <laughs> no. If you hear me start talking crazy like that, you see I laugh and I'm joking with you. I'm not one of these $29.7 million. Oh, we should here he comes. He's coming in the room. $10 million, man. Believe what you want to believe. If, if, if you're going to start buying people's stuff, get the facts down, right? Understand. Get referrals. See what's going on with other people, <laughs> right? But again, you got to see if it works for you, right? Hammer Power 100, what's up? Says, would you let uh, an item sit at the FBA for three to, seven, three to seven months? Is that too long? No. I got stuff sitting there that's three years old, <laughs> right? Um, so, like, I mean... It's all about when I'm buying this stuff, I'm understanding in my head how long is this going to take. Now, if I just dropped, let's say, let's say it's $600 on these, these this product A over here, right? Um, when I spend that type of money on that product A, $600, I want that gone. I want that back. I want that money back pretty darn soon, within 30 days for sure, right? So there's that mentality. And then there's the mentality of, oh, well, I just bought, you know, 400 Beanie Babies. And I spent a hundred dollars. 
of course I'm gonna I'm gonna treat it with respect and say you know I want to get that money but if I, if they sit out there forever or you know it takes a year to get rid of them all and I get fifteen hundred dollars or two grand back I'm winning <laughs> right <laughs> yeah I mean so you know I really wouldn't worry about if you've got some product at Amazon that's sitting there for a while because I think anybody it's it's hard to get all the winners. It's hard to get all the fast turns. You know, um, you could try. You could try that business model. I just, for me, you know, I, I guess it's hard for me to explain because I'm just not always a fast turn guy. I do long tail too. So I look at it like I said before. Like these are all small investments. They're all small investments. Every time I buy it, whether it's this little Lego guy, you know, or I don't know, this cigarette, it's an investment. What did I pay for this? How much can I flip this for? What's the lowest price on Amazon? What happens when there's the race to the bottom? Right, all this stuff, right? Um, you know, and that's the thing. I see, uh, you know, hammer parses one hundred, so blow it out after a while. Yeah, sure, but what if you're the lowest price right now on that item that's been sitting there for a year? How do you blow it out even further? You know, that that's the thing. I think, um, and that that's the, really, I think it's a million dollar question for me. Like I said before, I don't have, I don't create sales with Amazon. I don't use that sales option feature. And honestly, if I'm the lowest price. Why would I need to lower it, my price anymore if I'm the lowest? I'm just shooting myself in the foot, right? It's a long tail item. It might not ever sell, <laughs> you know. But over time, and gradually, you're, you're you know you're relying on that sales rank system to say, hey, this this originally at one point in time sold, and you're already lined up. You got the buy box for it, your lowest price. What what do you need to do? Go through there and slash it fifty percent. Then you're just giving away money. You might as well go outside in the street corner, or when you're driving around your car tonight. Roll on the window and start throwing quarters out because that's what you're doing. Throwing dollars out, five dollars, ten dollars, just whip it out the window because that's what you're doing. You start blowing that stuff out like that. Now, I have a different philosophy with that with eBay. All right, because eBay is a different game. You know, Amazon. The game is everybody's on the same listing. So if somebody's thrashing and dashing and blowing out prices, you're seeing it. Okay, but if it's eBay, nobody's really seeing it unless you're you're creating these sales. So I'm, I'm a big component of, you know. Selling certain items on eBay, you know, at discounted prices. Or yeah, I've had this uh, men's dress shirt for six months. Six months, six months. It's taking up a very little spot in my garage. It's sitting in a box. Uh, but I want it gone. I only paid a dollar for it. I had it at thirty. So now I just throw fifty off, fifty percent off sale, fifteen bucks. I'll take the fifteen. I'm still profiting, right? You never want to start lowering your 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 sales to where you're losing money, or you're breaking even. I mean. I guess you could for the breaking even part just to get some cash flow back in, but you know, um, but I think it's two different approaches, you know. Um, we got some, got some people in the house here. We got Andrew L, Oki Silver Dude, Mothership Products, Picking Profits, the Profit Boss in the house, Hammer Power 100. We've got uh, Brandon Ortega's, Michael Pierce, Flipping Footwear, which I was just watching Flipping Footwear's video. I haven't finished it yet, I was watching it earlier. Pretty cool stuff with that point of view uh, camera you got there at the Goodwill Weigh and Pay. It was pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Brandon says I had a one-page ebook on how to take your business to the next level. This page just says stop whining on Facebook and get that stuff you bought listed. Yeah, that would. I mean, you know what? That's what people need, right? Just put these ebooks out there. Say, here's how you change your business. It's one-page PDF. And you just open it up, and it says "work." <laughs> Get off your ass and work, punk. That's what it takes, right? Um, but obviously, you know some of these things, guys. I mean, it's like anything. You know, there's value to some of this stuff. There's, and then there's not. Um, you know, it's all about the content creator. Is that guy giving you value, or that girl giving you value, or are they just humming you along, and they're not going to be around in a year? You know. Uh, Michael Pierce, Mike, what do you feel is an acceptable amount of time to keep an item on eBay, assuming it's a typical item shirt, etc.? Well, here's the thing, right? Like for me with concert shirts, I've got concert shirts that are on eBay that are four or five years old, believe it or not, but they're higher priced. So, you know, with my higher price stuff like that, I'm in, I'm in no hurry to get rid of those. I mean, yeah, I want those to sell today for sure, but you know, I'm in no hurry. They're designed that way to be a higher price. I'm waiting for that one collector. But if I've got a common Ralph Lauren shirt or a common action figure or a coffee mug, I want them gone pretty as fast as I can get rid of them. You know, I, and once they get online, I want them gone. And we all know that doesn't work that way. You can list 100 items every day for the next week, and how many of those items are going to sell? Right? Depends on what you're grabbing, but you know, um, 
But for me, I just look at it and go, they're just sitting out there. They're sitting out in a lot of land, and when they sell, they sell. You know, obviously, I get aggressive and I create sales, um, and, and try to lower the price on Amazon or on eBay to get some action going. So somebody buys this piece of you know leftover junk that's been sitting for six months, right? Because I get all it is is getting cash flowing. Now, you know, I think the the hardest thing to figure out with as a reseller is, okay, well, I just want to do fast turns, Mike. Well, what are the products? Well, there's I can give you a list of them. You know, but it changes, and it's because I could say, you know, right now Polaroid cameras will sell within 24 hours at certain price points. That could change by the time you go to the thrift store tonight and buy one, right? So, you know, I mean, there's just so many different variables with, when it comes to reselling, and there's all these different approaches and, you know, systems, and I think really I've tried them all. I believe I've honestly tried them all. I've tried every which way you can look at it with eBay, um, especially eBay. With when do I do auctions? When do I do buy it now best offer? When do I get rid of this stuff? When do I dump stuff? And it's an ongoing just research project, right? I mean, it's all just a um, you're you're seeing the system. You're seeing what the system does for you and seeing how you can tweak it. All right. And once you tweak it and say, yeah, that actually worked out. I put I had a thirty percent off sale on my eBay store this week, and uh, my sales jumped up. You know, I got an extra forty sales out of it. Well, there you go, right? Um, not every product is designed to sell immediately once it goes online. And if you've been doing eBay for a while, you know this, that especially clothing and, and some of these other things, it becomes saturated. There's a lot of other sellers out there, and there's a hundred of these freaking Brooks Brothers size medium shirts. Actually, there's thousands, right? So, you know, you got to look at it that way and say, well, I see this guy on Facebook. He sells those Ralph and Polo shirts for $20 by now best offer. Well, you know, ask them then. If you're buying that stuff, you know, like, hey, it might want to sell. Hey, how long did it take for that to sell? See what the response is. And it's all variables because maybe the one you're selling is the wrong color for the guy that's 2XL, right? I mean, it can be as simple as that. It's the wrong color, the wrong size, and you're just waiting for it. But that's why, you know, I said in my last video, it's, it's all about patience. You know, you got to have patience with this stuff. And if you could pick up someone's clothing for, for a dollar or two dollars and, and sell them for 20, 30, 40 and up, like I said, it's stocks. It's like stocks, man. Um, uh, picking profits, what's the most uh, you will pay for an excellent use condition Brooks Brothers long sleeve non iron dress shirt with an elaborate colorful uh, pattern and logo on the chest? Um, I'd probably do six because I, you know, worst case scenario on that, and me personally, $20 shipped in that shirt. I mean, obviously, I, I, I can get $25, $30 shipped, but. Uh, Six would be my breaking point, and it'd have to be, you know, excellent, you know, used condition. Um, and it'd have to be pretty funky. I wouldn't just go buy a white Brooks Brothers 9 iron for $6. I'd, I'd pass it up every time. But um, <clears throat> it just depends on your scenario, too. I know where Andrew's at, Connecticut, it's, his price points are all over the place. They're here, too, you know. Um, gosh, well, here's – when I went out uh, last night, or yesterday afternoon, went to Goodwill, and there was this uh, – Florida Panthers starter jacket pullover, and I saw it once I walked in the store. I saw it sitting on the shelf. I said, "Okay," and I ran over there. Thirty nine ninety nine. <laughs> I just looked at the tag, and I'm just like, I mean, just like, what is this? What, come on, man, thirty nine ninety nine. That's what about they sell for forty to fifty, sixty bucks, right? So I just let it go there. I was just looking at it going. That's a shame. You know, years ago, I mean, that jacket had been two ninety nine, a dollar ninety nine, but. You know, you just got to deal with what's in your area and um, understand that the if these prices for clothing are too high and, you, you know, you're not hitting your margins, walk away from them, <laughs> you know. Um, walk away from them. I mean, it, that's why, like, with vintage clothing, you can kind of set your own price, right, because it's unique. It's it's a, it's a um, it's something unique, and somebody doesn't somebody won't mind dropping 50 bucks on that or $100 on that jacket or buy that $300 concert shirt. Right, because it's unique. They want something unique. They don't, you know. Um, people know they can go on eBay and get a steal. I mean, you, you could. Oh my God, think about it. Besides going to the thrift store, you can go on eBay, and if you are a working man or you're looking to to you're a reseller, and you're like, man, you know, yeah, I want to, I want to look nice. I want to wear some nice polo shirts, Ralph Lauren, whatever it may be. Right? You could. I mean, compared to the retail prices, God, for five hundred dollars, you can have a field day on eBay. <laughs> Buying clothing, right? Yeah, I mean it's it's crazy. Um, 
Brandon says, uh, have you ever used OfferUp? Yeah, I've used OfferUp. Uh, actually, that's why I sold something this morning. I sold a uh, TV stand. Um, my OfferUp area here, there's not much on there. I think it's still growing. But, um, yeah, it's definitely worth looking into for sure. Uh, the other day I bought, this guy had an N64 on there. He was just on the road, and I was like, how much? And I uh, went over there and hooked it up, and life was good. But I, I think it's getting more and more popular for sure. I know Pete uses it, the Crisis Hunter. And he's having some success with it and some others I've heard online. But, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, if you're ignoring the local game, I think that's a mistake, all right? I think that's a mistake. I mean, you know, we all want to make money. We all want to do this, this, that. But, I mean, what's – isn't it a lot more easier just to buy something like a, a cured coffee maker and put a picture and, you know, offer up or your, Facebook, your local Facebook buy, sell, trade and flip to somebody locally – I mean, my gosh, guys, take your phone, snap, boop, offer up, 45 bucks. It'll be gone, right? Somebody will want that. Somebody needs a Keurig, <laughs> right? You don't have to shit, sit there and list on eBay, and then maybe if you got buy now, best offer, you're getting lowballed on it, and then uh, maybe you had free shipping on it, and you're living in Florida, and now it shit, it's got to ship to California, and you sold for 40 and now you had to spend 18 hours to ship it there. You see what I'm saying? You know, you utilize that local game, all right? Start selling one more, man. Sell whatever. Find the deals and get the price points and start flipping the shit, man. Flipping that shit. <laughs> uh, vlogs by Cali. Offer up in New York is great. Yeah, I, th I would I would ass assume that offer up in these bigger cities and states, um, there's more population, are huge. Um, you know, for my offer up, is I'm just looking down here. I mean, I'm not even looking at Phoenix or Tucson. It's just over here. Um, and this is a small area over here, so... I couldn't imagine what offer up looks like in Chicago or, or New York or, you know, um, some of these San Francisco, L.A. So, um, yeah, there were some questions that were um, somebody asked me earlier. I want to get to them here. All right. Um, this one's from, uh, and I'm going to butcher your name, and I'm sorry. It's Naj Najla? Najela? Uh, Michael, what are your thoughts on changing the setting of Amazon to ship to just one warehouse? I understand the fee structure. I was just wondering if you think it's cost effective and if you think it may affect sales. Well, here's the thing, right? Um, there's a fee for that, which you know, which is, let me just, so I've got my numbers right here. I've got the listing up here. All right, it's 30 cents for a pound or less, right? Um, one to two pounds, over two pounds, um, it's about 40 cents. Over two pounds, it's plus 10 cents over the first two pounds of the product, right? Um, oversized the dollar thirty, so got to keep that in mind, right? If you're selling small margin stuff, that stuff will eat you up, right? I mean, it'll eat you up. And um, if you're selling long tail, what's the hurry then? Why not just? I mean, you know, um, obviously there is a. We want to buy this stuff. We want to get in a box and get it shipped to them right away, right? For sure. But if it's if you're selling books or CDs or whatever it is, you know, um, that you know are long tail, just send it out the way. Amazon wants you to send it out, right? I think if you're using the inventory placement system, this is how I would use it. And I've used it in the past. It, it's to, if you've got some products that have ROI in them, some really decent margins, yeah, and you just want to get them all to one location, that's great. Just absorb the cost. It's not very much, right? I use it during the fourth quarter months, right, right before, you know, um, that November, December. I want to make sure this stuff is freaking there. So I just freaking dial it in. I'll drop the thirty cents in the item, and out the door it goes. And it's awesome because you don't have to sit there and go, "All right, uh, A B E two, oh my gosh, P H seven now. Oh my gosh, going to Indy, Tennessee. You know, it gets to be <coughs> we're shipping stuff all over the damn place, and um, it gets a little frustrating for sure. You know, you're you know you're looking at your FBA shipments like, damn, I got one thing going to this place in uh, Tracy, California. One thing. So what do you do? You know, I mean, I try to build boxes. I'm shipping stuff out every week, so I'm always building boxes. So when I get stuff that is, you know, um, one-offs going to one location, it's not a big deal. I mean, I try to squeeze that one item, and if I've got multiples of it, into another um, another shipment, because you can easily do that, just change the quantity, right, um, in your other listing, and just say, well, yeah, I originally said two quantity, and it broke up to two different shipments. Well, then just go into one of those shipments to change the one to a two and voila, right? Magic. And now you're shipping two to that one location. But 
you know, I think um, overall, if you've never used it and you start using it, it it's a setting, so it just doesn't turn off. You got to go actually physically go in there and change it, because when I first started doing it, um, I did it a couple of years back, and I was doing it, and uh, it was right around Q4, and I started realizing like I was doing shipments in January and February. I'm like, man, this is great. Everything just go to freaking one location, and I totally forgot about it. And then I got a hit with another bill on it, and it was like six hundred forty dollars. I'm like, and I didn't know what it was for. Honestly, I looked at my Amazon statement, and it said six hundred forty bucks. And then I called them, and they said, "Oh, that's the inventory thing you signed up for." I was, "Oh, okay, that makes sense." And I said, "Okay, got to change it back because you start getting all this product over there that, that adds up quick, <laughs> for sure." Um, yeah, picking profits says, you know, inventory placement is critical for Q4 arbitrage for sure, right? Um, and you want to get this stuff in ASAP. I mean, you know, for me, you know, doing a lot of the merch filled toys, you know, I'm a, there's no worry with that with this inventory placement because I'm selling it out of my house and I'm shipping it. But there are times where <clears throat> I know a certain product or an item will go right to Phoenix. That meaning for me, being outside Phoenix, it'll get checked in. I could ship it today, it gets checked in tonight. That's huge, right? So I can literally send in. I don't know, 35 Paw Patrol, and it's all going to go over there, right? Is it worth the extra 30 cents per item? Well, heck yeah. When you're buying those things for, I don't know, 12, and there was some for 60, 70, heck yeah. You want it there ASAP. Get the, get the money. You know, get in and get out type of a program. So, uh, yeah, I would just, I would look at it for your scenario. Like I said, if your ROIs are small or you're only making a couple bucks an item, there's no need to even do inventory placement, honestly, in my opinion. People can yell and scream and say, oh, I sell bars of soap for... 10% ROI, and I do that all the time. Well, that's great. I mean, we're here to make money, aren't we? <laughs> we're, here, we're here to make some money and resell, and um, not here to play 10% pickup. You know? <laughs> uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Mike, do you ever utilize priority mail for FBA in Q fourth quarter for fast deliveries for, for, for FBA? Um, no. I mean, it's – I think with UPS, honestly um, – it's pretty quick for me, right? Now, if I have a small box, let's say I've got enough where it's 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 feasible. Because I mean, let's take this, let's take this for example. I just sent a box to Tennessee, fifty pounds. It cost me eleven dollars to get it there, right? It's going to arrive in about five days, which is pretty good. Now, obviously, priority mail is two days, but typically, you know, the, you're not going to get priority mail for less than what six dollars, five eighty five, right? So, yeah, if you've got smaller items. But once you hit over that pound or two pounds or even a flat rate box, you're still looking at $10 or $11, which is a benefit, something to definitely look into. I mean, if you've got, let's say there's a hot selling video game uh, for this Q4, yeah, you can cram a boat ton of those in a freaking priority mail flat rate box. That'd probably be the best way to go. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, utilize it. I've never really utilized it that way. I mean, I have sent priority mail out to Amazon, but I haven't. Like done anything like that in Q4? Oh my God! Sorry guys, the kill us. forget spider. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Brandon says here I don't like it in Q4 because they move that inventory to where they want it anyway, and it's not for sale while Amazon moves it around. Yeah, that's their thing there. I mean, when they start moving that product around, it's not for sale, right? Um, it's just sitting there in the state of limbo, so um, that could take another couple days. You know, um, all these diff different advantages and disadvantages. And it's just finding out what kind of what works for you for sure. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Silver dude's right. Yeah. Shipping costs for its ability to possibly get product there fast. Yeah. Um, you know, just uh, obviously the goal is to get the stuff there as fast as you possibly can. But you know, with their with their shipping rate, my gosh. I mean, work. You can't even ship products anywhere. Any cheaper than their rate, what they're giving us with UPS. It's sickening. I mean, really, I, what did I send out yesterday? Um, it was like 400 pounds, and it really was about 70 to $90 or something like that to ship all that out for 400 pounds. I thought that was pretty crazy of a price. <laughs> Uh, Lush Production, just curious. I hear all this talk with retail arbitrage with Amazon, but does anybody do retail arbitrage for eBay? Yeah, I do all the time, for sure. Yeah, um, you know, I do retail arbitrage, online arbitrage. You know, when you when you have products that you can flip on Amazon, that you can send to Amazon, and then you can use multi-channel fulfillment, 
right? Why, why not have that stuff listed on uh, eBay as well, right? Why not? Why not? What less fees on eBay? Okay, um, especially if you've got something that's a little bit longer tail, um, that's sitting there for a while. I mean, if you got ten thousand items at your at your Amazon store, and um, you know, why not piggyback some of those and, and put some of the inventory on eBay? It doesn't cost you much, you know. But yeah, there's there's definitely opportunity, um, lost production for retail arbitrage stuff for for eBay for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean there was uh, you know, look at any look at look at the Disney Frozen phase back, you know, a couple years ago. There, I mean, the stuff was it obviously was selling quicker on Amazon, but yeah, if you had these these Elsa dolls on auction, these dresses, they were moving too, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, Michael Pierce, I just shipped eighty pounds this morning for thirty five dollars. You can't beat it. You can't beat it for sure. All right, uh, what else did I want to talk about? Do, 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 do. Let's see here. Where are we at time? Uh, there was one more question that I wanted to answer. Okay. Okay, so this question is from Tom Rolando. What do you do when the bottom falls out in pricing? Do you hold the item, the items, hoping the price goes back up? Well, I mean, if, if it's if it's failing and then it's bottoming out, if I could sell it for a profit, I'm 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 bailing on it. Right. I mean, I'm not going to sell it for a one percent profit. That's just ridiculous. Um, I'll just wait it out. I'll wait it out and see what happens. I'll just wait it out. A lot of times you do that, it's just it becomes better. Right. Especially if you're if you're dealing with the the retail arbitrage people, the people that are, you know, a lot of these people are in it for the, the run and gun and they want that stuff in there and they want it gone. When that race to the bottom occurs, everybody starts dumping it. Especially if you look at December uh, Q four. The listing will look completely different January fifth <laughs> compared to December tenth. So you can, if you hold off, you can make more money. I found most of the time, but it depends on the item. But yeah, if you can get in and get out uh, and make a profit, that's what I would do on any of this stuff for sure. Um, especially when there's congestion, there's 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 uh, a lot of um, low ballers coming in, stuff like that. Um, but if it's something that's not easily available. Um, and it's and it's letting and it's, it, the bottom dropping out on that. Let that person sell out, right? Let them sell out. So, uh, let's see here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, Okie okay, Silver, just wait for the Star Wars phenomenon this year. Yeah, it's happening now, right now. I'm telling you, Star Wars is happening now. I just sold like eight Star Wars action figures this morning. Star Wars is happening now. People are getting amped up. Oh, hold on, guys. Yeah, people are getting Star Wars is, is getting gonna get more popular and popular every month and up until Christmas. Then it's gonna be a frenzy. But people are buying now Star Wars. <laughs> um so definitely keep that in mind for sure. The uh da -da 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 -da. I think you know, um I wanted to really come on here today. Oh gosh, come on. Oh great, my daughter's sick now. Uh All right, yeah, but I wanted to jump on here, guys, and just kind of tell you, you know, about this whole ways to scale, um, and mostly the biggest takeaway of that is to just start building that bankroll, creating that fund, creating that money, and um, look at all the opportunities. Don't just dive in to stuff. Um, but uh, wanted to come here Friday here before Memorial Day weekend, and you know, encourage you guys just to go out there and work, right? Go out there and work. Um, if you're if you've already done your work and your time, you want to keep back, you know, now's the time to do that for sure. Uh, if you got stuff out there online, you know. Um, Get aggressive, start selling some some of the stuff. Keep keep stuff listing, um, and really at the end of the day, you know, just uh, keep bringing more product online. Start making more money, and uh, just work at your pace. So uh, I appreciate all you guys watching me. Check me out live here, and uh, for all you guys that are checking out on the replay, if you guys just want to do me a favor, just give me a thumbs up on this. I really super appreciate it. The likes mean a lot, and they go a long way for sure. But uh, just go out there, be you, you know, um, be successful, work hard, and uh, and just stay committed. That's pretty much what you could do. So I'm out here, guys. Till next time. Peace.